And right there, it has to be one of the main reasons for using a speed light over any other sort of flash. It's just so lightweight. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And this video is all about using speed lights to create beauty lighting. And I've got three looks and setups in mind that are all gonna make use of beauty lighting in different ways. Actually, at this point, I was gonna tell you to click on the subscribe button and bell icon, but I realized there's something way more important I need to do right now, and that is to tell you if you're gonna put your light up way high, and you are, it's beauty lighting, remember to switch your light on now before you put it up in the air, because once again, I've forgotten. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe's gonna be the model for this photo session. And before we get going, let's just have a quick think about how speed lights might affect what I'm going to do. Perhaps the biggest thing for most photographers is my ISO. I have a native ISO with my Olympus camera of 200, and that's what I'm going to recommend that you work at because ISO 100 versus ISO 200 requires twice as much light. So your flash will only last half as long and it won't recycle as fast and so on. So my settings are ISO 200 at F, 5.6 for a reasonable depth of field and 250th of a second, which is my flash sync speed. I'm gonna take a picture without any flash firing and no flash gives me no photo. So we have complete control of the room lights in this setup. The softbox I'm working with today is the Glow Hexapop 24 inch softbox. And this is ideal for speed light work for a couple of reasons. Firstly, there's no inner diffuser on this one. So it is just a single skin, which means I get the maximum efficiency from my flash. And that actually extends to the back because I'm using the optional OTA mount that comes with the Hexapop. That's a much tighter fit around the speed light. So you don't lose light leaking out the back. The one thing I don't have with speed lights that I'm really missing compared to a studio light is a modeling lamp. Modeling lamps are really useful, particularly with beauty lighting. They allow you to get your light in just the right position. So we're gonna do it the other way, which is trial and error. Now I've already made this the correct exposure for my camera setup. Let's just take a test photo, see how it looks. Okay, Chloe, are you ready? Here we go. And the end result is Perfectly fine. I've got the correct exposure on Chloe, but the direction of that light is not quite what I'm after. What I'm gonna do is just lower my light down until it becomes, well, roughly the right height. What is the right height? Well, that is entirely up to you, but what I'm gonna do is have a look at my EVF. So I've just flipped the screen round. I'm gonna lower this light down until I can see it appear at the top and then I'm gonna take it up ever so slightly so it is no longer in my viewfinder. That puts the light as low as I can reasonably get it without it appearing in my frame. Now that is gonna affect the exposure because the light is closer to Chloe. I could do trial and error. I could just use TTL or I can use a flash meter, which is what we're gonna do here. So Chloe, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Always point my flash meter at the light I want to meter. Really easy, there is no light other than the main one in this shot. Okay, let's take a test photo like that. Here we go. So now I've got better lighting on Chloe. I still have the shadow directly below her chin that you would expect with beauty lighting. And if we look close, I can see a catch light in her eyes as well. There's a couple of optional extras you can do with beauty lighting. So the first one is going to be a reflector below. This is just gonna bounce some light in and fill in some of the shadows underneath Chloe's chin like that. And then I've got to look at my screen again to make sure that this does not appear in the screen. So once again, I'm just going to drop it ever so slightly down just until it disappears from my viewfinder, just like that. Okay, let's see how this changes the picture. I don't have to change my exposure for the camera or the flash. The reflector is just a passive thing. It bounces light in. You don't have to touch anything. Just let it do its job. Another optional extra is what do you do with the background? I could leave it just to go dark gray, but as I've got several speed lights, I might as well use them. So this is a second speed light. It's different to the first one. This is the Flashpoint Zoom Lithium Ion X. It has a round shaped head and that will fire a round-ish circle of light onto the background. Spoiler alert, it's not completely round, but it's gonna be better than the rectangle you normally would get. Now it's on its own separate group, so I can independently control it, 
The key light is actually on 1 16th power, so I figure let's start with the background light on 1 16th power as well. Okay, let's just take a test shot like this and see how it goes. Here we go, Chloe. And the end result is not bad. That's pretty good. But there is an advantage to using a speed light as your background light, because from the remote control right here, I can press the zoom button and I can change the zoom of that light from its widest angle all the way up to its most zoomed in. Here we go. And have a completely different look to the vignetting that I'm getting. So I've got that ability to change it up, but there's one more thing I can do, and that is add some color. So this is a little magnetic gel. This one is the sandy brown color. And I'm gonna attach that to my background light because Chloe is styled in this sort of sandy brown look. So I kind of think, well, let's try that. It will affect the exposure, but I'm gonna leave it on the same settings just to see how it looks. Okay, Chloe, here we go. And the end result is a warmer tone background that really ties in nicely with the whole look and style that we got going with Chloe. So that all seems to be working really well. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Although I could use the silver side of the reflector, I prefer the white side. It still bounces in lots of light, but leaves a little bit of a shadow underneath Chloe's chin. The grey paper background is gone and in its place is this rather nice olive background from Manfrotto. You'll find gear links to everything I'm using in the video description below. Because this already has some colour on it, I don't need the gel that I had before, so I'm going to take that off the background light. Let's talk about what's happened around the front here. So we've got rid of the reflector. In its place, I've got a table and we've done some styling on this because, well, now it's starting to make a bit more sense. So that gives Chloe a lot more to interact with and makes this still a beauty lit portrait, just with style. I need to position the light. So once again, I'm going to flip my LCD screen around and then just lower this down until it appears in the frame and then raise it back up again. So the light is at roughly the same position as it was before, which should mean that the exposure is roughly the same as it was before. I could meter this out, or I could just take a test shot and do a trial and error, which is what we're going to do. Okay, Chloe, quick little test photo, here we go. And not surprisingly, light's in the same place. The light is the same exposure as it was before. Yes, we have more shadows on Chloe because I've taken away the reflector, but in this case, that's exactly where I want things to be. So I'm gonna leave them well alone. And that's really all there is to this. It is effectively the same lighting, just with more props. So Chloe, if you're ready, let's take a few photos like this. Here we go. Props are always useful. They can add some styling, but they can also tell a story. And in this case, I felt it added a kind of a reflective mood to the pictures. And Chloe's really done well to represent that in her poses. So once again, I'm going to position my light until it's just out of my viewfinder, something like that, because you'll see that things have changed yet again. For the last setup, I've moved Chloe, so now she is sat against the background with another background acting as a floor, because beauty lighting doesn't have to be just head and shoulders. You can mix it up a little bit and go, well, I was going to say full length, but Chloe is sat down technically full length, I guess. Of course, if I've moved anything, I want to just check my light, make sure that everything is the correct exposure. So Chloe, I'm going to pop my flash meter near your chin, pointing at the light I want to meter. This time it's just a single flash. There's no background light required for this because well, there's no room for it, really. And once again, I'm going to get this back to f5.6. And once I've got that, we're good to go. Let's just take a test photo like this and see how this looks. OK, Chloe, here we go. And that works really well. We still have the beauty lighting, looking at the shadows, they're still going straight down underneath Chloe's chin. It's quite a wide spread of light, so I think that's something I'm going to address. 
what I'm going to do is add the grid to the hexapop and this is just going to stop the light spreading quite so far. I'm not going to change the position of the light, it's in the right place, but it is going to affect the output of the light. Usually grids take away about a stop of light, more or less. I could just guess, we do trial and error, or I can pop this near Chloe's chin, here we go, and see that, yeah, actually it took away a stop of light. Let's just change that. Bring myself back to f5.6, so I know I've got my exposure correct. But it should stop it spreading quite so wide, but it'll still spread a fair bit. Let's have a little look at this and see how this changes the picture. Here we go, Chloe. And if you're thinking, why don't I use the zoom function to affect the spread of the light, this time that won't work because the speed light is inside of a softbox, and that's why you need the grid. So that's everything set up. So Chloe, if you're ready, Ready. Okay, let's take a few photos like this. This is still the same fundamental lighting we started with at the beginning, because beauty lighting isn't just about head and shoulders portraits. Once you've learnt the basics, you can expand your horizons. Doesn't matter whether your speed light is a round one or a rectangular one, they are just so useful to have in a small home studio because your lights are really close, their small size is not really an issue. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, if you haven't already done so, why not click on that subscribe button? I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.